All right, good morning. Welcome to Switchpoint. I'm going to read a little introduction first. Switchpoint is a conference about creativity, collaboration, and action. It's for humanitarian innovation, global health, international development, imagination, and technology all collide. Serious global challenges and how we respond to them can shape the course of our lives. Our actions, both collectively and individually, can make great impact in the world. They have the power to influence policy, motivate individual behaviors, and change the course of history. Over the next two days, you will be exposed to an incredible amount of information and a whirlwind of ideas, stories, and questions. Our goal with Switchpoint is to get you personally motivated to get involved, find incredible people to work with, to share your ideas, learn from others, and make a difference. We know that engaging people across boundaries can make or makes change happen. Stretch yourself, be overwhelmed, and then focus. IntraHealth International puts on this three-ring circus of collaboration and creativity, or what they call their global scan for the best and the brightest, because these are the people they most want to work with and learn from. Imagine the challenges that could be solved when the minds in this room come together. That includes each and every one of you. This year's Switchpoint speakers are coming from around the world, from, company, from major companies and tiny startups in far-off places. They're coming from those infamous inventor garages, from schools and labs, governments, foundations, consortiums, and stages big and small. They are makers and inventors, hackers and performers, policymakers, business leaders, engineers, coders, designers, communicators, and activists. All of them are doing powerful things with limited resources, tackling big, complex ideas in new ways with dedication, guts, and radical creativity. The UN Foundation, where I work, is also invested in diversity, impact, and big ideas, which is I assume why they asked me to open this morning. So let me tell you a little bit about who I am and uh, my, the organization I work for. If we could have the first slide. This is a quote I was given two or three months ago when I, a PR journal asked me to, to write about my story. The journal said, uh, you have a really interesting background. I have no idea how you got to where you are today. Um, do you mind responding to this quote? And I said, sure. I actually had never looked back, really. <laughs> I, I'm a forward-looking guy, always moving at 100 miles an hour. And it caused me to look back at what I call the little cheerleaders in my life. Those cheerleaders that are cheering you on the way, that are giving the, that, that leg up or that inspiration to be who you are today. Um, it made me look at my parents, my, my neighbors, my teachers, um, and everyone in my life that has helped me get to where I am today. And it was, a, it was kind of overwhelming. If you haven't done that, I really encourage you to do it. Um, <laughs> how many of you have had your parents, um, or how many of you have woken up and seen a photo that your mom or dad has posted on social media um, on your birthday to embarrass you? This next one will tell you, this is what I woke up to on uh, February 21st of this year. This is me and my twin brother. My twin brother, of course, is behaving on the right. I have a washcloth in my mouth on the left. Um, my brother is a very successful cardiologist. My parents have no idea what I do. <laughs> uh, next slide. So this is where I come from. I'm coming back from my roots. I'm based in New York now. I was born in Greenville, raised on a farm outside of um, Greenville um, until I was uh, 10, and then moved to the big city of Grifton, North Carolina, if you know it. Uh, it's a size of 2,000 people. Um, and I, I went to uh, UNC Chapel Hill, go Hills. Um, and I also worked at Duke, my twin went to Duke, so if you're, if you're a Dukey, I, I forgive you. Um, these are some incredible uh, organizations I've worked with. Um, you know, I've been very lucky in my life to have uh, incredible managers that have pushed me um, to, to really reach for the stars, and I've, I'm very fortunate to work with um, some incredible brands. Uh, next slide. 
Um, you know, at the UN Foundation, we're tasked with, with really communicating some, some major um, challenges with the world. And these are just a few. I mean, I think I could have gone on and on and on. But when you're, when you're tasked with, you know, increasingly you know, high rates of unemployment, especially among youth, climate change, how do you communicate that we have to do business differently? Um, anything that's plugged into to carbon or to fossil fuels has to be done different. How do you communicate that to a world that's moving in you know, the, the second industrial revolution? We really need to be the, the third or fourth if you follow WEF. Um, you know, refugee flows, famine. Um, we have you know, human rights violations, uh, terrorism, global economy, GDP is on a decline for the next 20 years or so, inequality, conflict. There's so much negative in the world. So we, we typically, when we're looking at things, you know, we connect people, ideas, and resources to help the UN accomplish what they are, are set out to do. Uh, go ahead, next slide. Ted Turner founded the UN Foundation 20 years ago. It was a bold idea. The UN, or the US was not paying its dues to the UN. He said, oh, no, no worries, I got this. I'll, I'll step up and pay a billion dollars. Um, it didn't really work out that way, so he created the UN Foundation to really tackle some, some major issues. So our, our key uh, focus areas, US, UN relations, global health, girls and women, strengthening public-private partnerships, uh, climate, uh, energy, and the environment, and then um, what I work on a lot is influencer engagement, bringing in celebrities, bringing in Hollywood, studios, um, if you saw the recent Smurf movie, that was one of my fun projects, um, to connect them to sustainable development agenda. Um, I, we train a lot of journalists around the world. Uh, next slide. So just really quickly, on you know, how do we communicate about the US funding for the UN in such a, you know, in a, in a challenging environment with this, you know, a new administration's in, they've basically said, hey, we want to, we, want, we don't want to fund the UN. Um, and if you've seen um, the Trump administration's budget, the skinny budget that they're proposing for, that's gone to Congress, um, luckily Congress has said it's you know, dead on arrival, but it, it is pro proposing you know, upwards of 30% cuts in, in, in international organizations and in the UN. So we've done, a, um, <laughs> we, it took us a while, but we are, are now uh, mobilizing grassroots uh, or, um, organizations, our UN association, um, so that, that's 120 chapters across the, the U.S. We have petitions up. Um, we're, we have CODELs and staff DELs. We have a CODEL in, a, at the U.N. this weekend with, with members of Congress. Um, we're really mobilizing to showcase the work of the U.N., the critical work of the U.N. around the world um, to, to the administration and to, to Congress. Um, that's led by the Better World Campaign and the U.N. Association. Next slide. These are our, my favorite campaigns at the UN Foundation. So Girl Up, it's a, a, a campaign that's led by girls, for girls all around the world. Um, they advocate, these, these teenage adolescent girls advocate on behalf of girls everywhere, um, and they're incredible, really the futures of, of, our, of our country. Nothing But Nets, our oldest grassroots campaign, tackles malaria through um, uh, the sports community. So uh, Steph Curry, if you know him, legendary basketball player. He is one of our biggest advocates on that campaign. And then Shot at Life um, really um, builds advocates to, to champion immunization um, here in the U.S., global immunization, um, by building advocates in the U.S. to advocate for global immunization around the world. Next slide. These are some of the um, alliances we house. Um, I don't think a lot of you probably know that the UN Foundation also houses some of these big alliances that, that you all probably know and love. Uh, the Global Alliance for Clean Cook Stoves. There are three billion people around the world that cook with solid fuels that cause harm to, to their health. Um, and so the Alliance is looking at how do we deliver clean cooking technology uh, to those households. So, you know, if, if you, this is a startling fa fact, but four million, roughly four million uh, women and children die every year based on how they cook. So it's a critical issue and um, the Alliance is working on that. Dial, our new, newest um, uh, alliance, Digital Impact Alliance, is looking at how they advance digital um, solutions um, around the world, and I think you'll hear more about that this week. Data2x, one of my other favorites, is donor decisions are made every single day on data that sometimes is missing data. So missing 
critical data on girls and women. So Data2x is trying to create a gender data revolution um, to really make sure that that, that data is, is captured. And then finally, uh, Family Planning 2020, a critical uh, alliance that is working with donors, governments, civil society, to get uh, access to the 120 million girls and women who want access to contraception, they're working on that challenge um, to, get, to get those um, girls and women access to contraception by 2020. Next slide. So I thought I would spend just 30 seconds more about the opportunities ahead because I, I did want to just uh, let you know what I'm working on, what's coming up next at the, the UN. So next slide. Um, the Sustainable Development Goals. You guys heard a lot about this last year, I hear. You see my pen. I'm a huge advocate of these goals. Um, this is incredible that 193 countries came together at the UN and signed up for a sustainable agenda. Uh, this is something we need to hold them accountable for. This is something that we need to make sure that we are advocating because they actually signed up for this, um, something that we want. Um, and just so everyone knows, the high-level political forum in July is the next opportunity that we will he hear progress on these goals. That's in July at the UN. 44 countries will come together and present how they are delivering on these goals. I encourage you to come. Next slide. Um, Wow, this is an incredible issue um, and something that I'm very passionate about because how do we go from the first and second industrial revolution to now the third when we have to change everything we do? And I think if you, if you haven't seen Jeremy Rifkin's new documentary on the third industrial revolution or read his book, he's incredible. But the, better, um, the, the Business and Sustainable um, uh, Development Commission um, based in the UK did a study that said, I'm going to read this because I'm going to get these numbers wrong, that if they studied four sustainable business models, energy, cities, food and agriculture, and health, and, and discovered that if we made changes in those, just those four business models, we could generate um, $12 trillion in economic opportunity and generate more than 380 million jobs by 2030, which is incredible. Next slide. And finally, the Ocean um, Summit, Ocean Conference is coming up at the UN um, in June. This is an incredible milestone for the UN because it is the first time that we have ministers coming together from around the world to actually say, we, ne we need to wake up and we need to actually clean our, clean our oceans. Um, so this is the Clean Seas campaign that the UN Environment Program launched. Um, and I don't know if you guys know this, but it's a startling fact. A, a uh, garbage truck of plastic is dumped into the ocean every minute of every day. And it's something that, again, we have to, once you, once you know the facts and you learn about the plastic we consume, it does change your behavior. And then I thought I would end on this really creative graphic and one of my favorite quotes, because often we look left and right for the solutions we want and the solutions we need, but often it sits with us. And it took me a long time to, to wake up and realize that I need to stop looking left and right, and I need to really look within and just to really stand up and, and be that same cheerleader that I, um, with the opportunities I had it growing up. So anyway, thank you so much, and I hope to uh, learn and hear from many of you um, this week. <clears throat>